discussing open your books please ऑफलाइन ना हाँ तो ऑफलाइन स्टूडेंट्स के साथ आऊँगी ना वो मैंने उनको बोले प्रिंसिपल मैम के पास जाओ हाँ रैट रैप आई डू आफ्टर दिस आई बी रिवाइजिंग एवरीथिंग नॉट वरी नाउ वी हैव एनफ टाइम एंड वी गोट अ गाइडलाइन सम आइडिया वी हैव नाउ सो द टेंटेटिव डेट व्हिच यू हैव गोट So you're going to start with your practicals also before that, and you have your pre-boards before that. So you have uh, we have a lot of time now, so no need to worry about it, okay? And uh, we still have until uh, twenty-eight. Even if you have two days preparatory, so twenty-fifth, twenty-sixth, we have time to do that, and I'm going to manage that. So let's finish with the chapter indigo today. Yes, what are the things that we have read here? Yes, what uh, was this that happened at uh, Champaran? What was the situation at Champaran? Molly, tell me. Champaran, what was the situation there? So the situation at Champaran was there was a deadlock between the landlords and the peasants, right? So because of the sharecropping system, and then Gandhi came there to on the scene. He helped the peasants. and with the arrival of gandhi what was the you know like uh, yes the transformation that happened among the peasants was that they learned courage they learned that if something is wrong they should have the courage to stand up and they got it with the arrival of gandhi on the scene right and yes the lawyers who were there gandhi was angry at them because they were exploiting the, the peasants they were terrorizing them they were creating fear in the minds and then when gandhi was you know like uh, sent, going to be you know what sentenced to jail and he says if i go what will you people do the lawyer said he will also go back but then afterwards they got together they made uh, you know like had a discussion and they thought that this person does not even belong here he is ready to go to prison for us what about us we belong to this place and they decided that see if you go then we'll also you know start ca carry on with this uh, what uh, this struggle or uh, you know like the representation that you are doing and if the need arises we will also go so two statements that was a one as the battle of champaran is won when did gandhi say this right and yes the the triumph of civil disobedience so here he refused to listen to the orders and uh, yes so even though it was they challenging the authority of the britishers but he did not create any violence he did not go against any rule and regulation he just said that i am a citizen of this country i can go anywhere i like and i have right to seek information okay right so let's continue with the reading of the chapter any problem anybody any doubts any doubts Yes, in June, Gandhi was summoned to Sir Edward Gate, the Lieutenant Governor, page fifty-one. Before he went, he met leading associates and again laid detailed plans for civil disobedience if he should not return. So he said that if I am once again sent to jail, what is it that you are going to do? So silently protesting that we don't accept your orders—that is what civil disobedience without violence. the core the key word is non violence okay gandhi had four protracted interviews with the lieutenant governor who as a result appointed an official commission of inquiry into the indigo share cropper situation the commission consisted of landlords government officials and gandhi as a sole representative of the peasants so an inquiry was formed and ironically there was no person or like from that place right there were gandhi was there representing the peasants no one from the peasants and in fact it was a peasant who started this movement who was the peasant kya tha naam 
Yes, who was the, who wanted to meet uh, Gandhi? Rajkumar Shukla. Yes. Gandhi, uh, okay, so the commission it started to look into the matter. So there were officials and Gandhi was there representing the peasants. Gandhi remained in Champaran for an initial uninterrupted period of seven months and then again for several shorter visits. The visit undertaken casually on the entreaty of an unlettered peasant in the expectation that it would last a few days occupied almost a year of Gandhi's life. So he went there, he went to Champaran, but when he reached there, he realized that the situation is really what a problem, it's a serious problem. He went casually there, but he ended up staying there for a year, right, till he sorted out the problem. The official inquiry assembled a crushing mountain of evidence against the big planters. And when they saw this, they agreed in principle to make refunds to the peasants. But how much must we pay? They asked Gandhi. Now, yes, the landlords, when they realized that evidence is our against, they said, okay, fine, we'll pay. We are going to pay the compensation, right? Because they had taken the money from the peasants that you don't want to grow indigo, so what do we do? Compensation, isn't it? Now, how much are they going to return? They should return the whole amount, isn't it? This is what should be done. But now they're worried, what is it that we should do? They thought he would demand repayment in full of the money which they had illegally and deceitfully extorted from the sharecroppers. He asked only 50%. They're very surprised. There he seemed adamant, writes Reverend J. Z. Hodge, a British missionary in Champaran who observed the entire episode at close range. Thinking probably that he would not give way the representative of the planters offered to refund to the extent of 25%. And to his amazement, Mr. Gandhi took him at his word, thus breaking the deadlock. They thought first Gandhi will ask to give all the money back. Then they said 50%, Gandhi said, okay. And then they thought, let's try again, you know, like let's ask him again. And they said, is 25% fine? Gandhi said, okay. Right now here, it is, once again, it is not the amount of money. The landlords say, Britishers, they were ruling and they had, you know, like controlled the peasants for so many years. And now all of a sudden, they are obeying them. They are listening to their demands. Right? So it is a big, uh, what you can say, incident here. This settlement was adopted unanimously by the commission. Unanimously means? Unitedly, sabke saath, yes. By the commission, Gandhi explained that the amount of the refund was less important than the fact that the landlords had been obliged to surrender part of the money and with it part of their prestige. So it is not 25% money, but along with 25% of the money, it is 100% of their prestige. Right, so unki reputation hai. It's what changed forever. That see, the peasants made them listen. So it's 25 money plus their prestige. Therefore, as far as the peasants were concerned, the planters had behaved as lords above the law. Before this, there was no law for the planters. Planters were them landlords, right? Now the peasants saw that he had rights and defenders, he learned courage. So unless and until you do not know that I have rights, I can stand up for them, you will never win. So little step, you know, little courage is always required to make about some change. Gandhi never contented himself with large political or economic solutions. He saw the cultural and social backwardness in the Champaran villages and want to do something about it immediately. And uh, as I've discussed earlier when we did this, one thing that was there, the peasants at the time, they were the weakest section of the society. In extreme poverty, extreme ignorance, basic hygiene, we name Alam Thanko, right? So if you read about incidents there and how you know he brought about a change in the life, so it is, it's not only giving them courage, it's not only about political empowerment, 
बट एक पूरा लाइफ का आउटलुक चेंज करना दैट इज वट गांधी डेट राइट ही सॉ द कल्चरल एंड सोशल बैकवर्डनेस in the champaran villages and wanted to do something about it immediately he appealed for teachers mahadev desai and narhari parekh two young men who had just joined gandhi as disciples and their wives can volunteered for the work several more came from bombay pune and other distant parts of the land devadas gandhi's youngest son arrived from the ashram and so did mrs gandhi primary schools opened in six villages kastur bai taught the ashram rules on personal cleanliness and community sanitation and uh, yes when we talk about the swachh bharat abhiyan we always have uh, that uh, symbol of gandhi yes. so how important he thought cleanliness hygiene it has to be right so it is ashram there how the people were made you know like yes to clean and take care of it to so, yahan pe bhi kya start kiya in the village he taught the peasants also about cleanliness about hygiene he started teaching them also so that they when you are educated you will learn to stand up for your self health conditions were miserable gandhi got a doctor to volunteer his services for 6 months three medicines were available castor oil quinine and sulfur ointment anybody who showed a coated tongue was given a dose of castor oil anybody with malaria fever received quinine plus castor oil anybody with skin eruptions received ointment plus castor oil so these three medicines were there and they were you know like kind of given for any kind of uh, problem that they had there was stomach hair skin hair malaria all this gandhi noticed a filthy state of women's clothes he asked kasturi bai to talk to them about it one woman took kasturi bai into a hut and said look there is no box or cupboard here for clothes the sari i am wearing is the only one i have so you can just imagine how sad their condition was they just wearing the clothes that they have right so because they were never given any kind of rights they were not given any kind of understanding the britishers there the landlords there they never thought about you know like giving them any kind of facilities so it was uh, something uh, uh, you know like yeah, a big change for them During his long stay in Champaran, Gandhi kept a long-distance watch on the ashram. He sent regular instructions by mail and asked for financial accounts. Once he wrote to the residents that it was time to fill in the old latrine trenches and dig new ones; otherwise, the old ones would begin to smell bad. So he's keeping a control over the situation at which place? The ashram, also. Okay, right. the chimparan episode was a turning point in gandhi's life so gandhi before that he was not aware of the problem 1917 when he came there to uh, this convention after that when he visited chimparan he came to know so it was not only a turning point for the peasants it was a turning point for gandhi also what i did was a very ordinary thing i declared that the british could not order me about in my country very true but champaran did not begin as an act of defiance it grew out of an attempt to alleviate the distress of large numbers of poor peasants who could political movement nahi tha it was just to show ya or rather to work for the betterment of the peasants this was a typical gandhi pattern his politics were intertwined with the practical day to day problems of the millions his was not a loyalty to abstractions it was a loyalty to living human beings in everything gandhi did moreover he tried to mold a new free indian who could stand on his feet and thus make india free that is why he wanted them to be educated that is why he wanted them to know about you know health sanitation hygiene and uh, so that yes they could contribute in free india early in the champaran action charles freer and rose the english pacifist who had become a devoted follower of the mahatma came to bid gandhi farewell before going on a tour of duty to the fiji islands gandhi's lawyer friends thought it would be a good idea for andrews to stay in champaran and help them andrews was willing if gandhi agreed but gandhi was vehemently opposed 
so he was a big admirer and he wanted ki i should stay here and support you but gandhi did not want his support why he said you think that in this unequal fight it would be helpful if we have an englishman on our side this shows the weakness of your heart the cause is just and you must rely upon yourselves to win the battle you should not seek a prop in mr andrews because he happens to be an englishman otherwise what would the britishers say ye agar ko ye britishers saath mein nahi hote they would never have won independence so he didn't want this to happen he says that we do not need any presence of the englishman we can fight for it independently without their support and he did that he had read our minds correctly rajendra prasad comments and we had no reply gandhi in this way taught us a lesson in self reliance self reliance indian independence and help to share croppers were all bound together okay any doubts any questions i think we have done the questions also here now students this is going to be your subjective exam i can i've told you again and again so hame content hamare paas hona chahiye okay because when you write the answers you need to be aware of early it was your multiple choice questions options were there in front of you and you had to select now you are going to write and how are you going to write you will write when you have the material with you so this chapter so many facts which are there okay right what is it is it only about champaran is it only about the peasants their rights or is it much more than that it is about bringing a big change in the life of the peasants right iske sath sath ek incident ke sath kya kya hua peasants got courage peasants were victorious what happened to the landlords what happened to the landlords they had to surrender money where even if it was 25% but they realize that we are not as powerful as we think we are not above law right then what about the people of that place right the common people they learned that yes we have the courage to stand up for our rights we don't need any outsider to support us if we all are united if we all are brave enough we can get our rights okay and yes of course for a larger cause working for the freedom of the country clear that is why in the last paragraph what has he said he did not want a britisher to support him so time is quite less with us and we have to do each and everything i'm going to revise it again and again till you people have it on your fingertips and two questions i had given from the chapter even tries a no level did you even read the questions which i gave in the test what are the test ki questions likhe nahi but mam padh liye the humne okay what were the questions what was uh, one was uh, how was the identity of mcclary important can you tell me jail ke andar jaane ke liye mcclary ki identity yes not, obviously and uh, naturally the appearance of mcclary was also important what where he was going to come from and uh, because uh, evans would have to dress up like that and that is how they would have to plan their escape so what was there very important it was about his dress it was about his appearance that was important okay his maybe way of speaking or whatever baki to unhone carry karna hi tha they would be carrying the question paper they would have carried that rubber tube even if it had been anybody else so that is why mcclary's identity was very important how did uh, they get this identity how did they come to know about mcclary uh, is going to come as an invigilator how did evans come to know so when he was signing the forms right there it was written okay yes that who is going to be the invigilator from the uh, parish you know now he was going to come okay what was the other question about uh, jackson and stephens it was i think so was it so even i don't remember now so i i'll just look at the question and then we'll discuss it answer any problem here in this chapter tell me now 
Why do you think Gandhi considered the Champaran episode to be a turning point in his life? The answer is here, right on top, the first, second line of this page. Yes, because he came to know about his countrymen, he came to know about the situation of the peasants, right? And uh, yes, it was uh, a turning point in his life because he was able to get uh, the involvement of the peasants and the common people to help him. How was Gandhi able to influence lawyers, give instances? When he says the battle of Champaran is won, he talks about the change of the lawyers. Pele lawyers ko kya tha? That should they work? No. They were happy with the money and they did not even think about it. What are they doing to their countrymen? You know, what are they doing to the peasants? But they, later on, they changed. What was the attitude of the average Indian in smaller localities towards advocates of home rule? Turn back to the page when he goes to Muzaffarpur. First they went there. This, they went to Rajendra Prasad's house. He was not there. Then whose house did they stay in? Whose house did they stay in? Yes. I'm not getting any response from the online students. Are you awake or are you sleeping, Ruchika? Professor Malkani. Yes, so Professor Malkani, and about home rule, what does he say? Were people willing to show their support? Were they willing to show their support? They were afraid of keeping people in their home, and especially people they knew who were representing a cause or who were leaders who were politicians, okay? Yes, Tanisha, you want to speak? How do we know that ordinary people too contributed to the freedom movement? So who are the ordinary people who contributed to the freedom movement? The peasants, yes? They were there, they contributed and in their own way by supporting Gandhi. And any movement for it to be successful, it is not only to be limited to the leaders and the politicians and the top people, it has to reach the grassroots level, okay? So the peasants were there. Freedom from fear is more important than legal justice for the poor. Do you think that the poor of India are free from fear after independence? Are we? What about here? You know, every day we read in the newspaper, there's some of the other problem happening. And do you think justice is delivered? And especially when you talk about the poor, what about the poor even the, the what people with money are also at times not able to get justice? Why do we have this free, uh, fear in our minds? Why, why is this fear? Yes, can I get an answer? 